Last year, I decided to celebrate my birthday in a unique way. I didn't have a big party or go out for a fancy dinner. No, instead, I decided to celebrate my birthday by reminding myself of my own mortality and taking a tour of Highgate Cemetery. Now, I did have a specific reason for wanting to go to Highgate, and it was to visit this grave here. Buried here is a young, talented, and gifted poet and painter. And in this episode, we're going to look at the life and legacy of Elizabeth Siddle. Elizabeth, or Lizzie as she would later become known as, was born in London on July 25th, 1829. Now, history primarily remembers Elizabeth as the muse for the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, as well as her toxic relationship with Dante Gabriel Rossetti. But Lizzie was so much more than just a Victorian icon. By her own right, she was a talented and gifted painter and poet who was really in touch with her deepest emotions and had such a gift for expressing them. At the age of 19, Lizzie was working in a hat shop when she caught the eye of a young artist named Walter Deverell. Her lush red hair and her unique features made her the perfect model for Deverell. But women during the Victorian period who worked as artist models were really shunned by society. They were seen as lustful and immoral by the same society that actually enjoyed looking at the pictures. However, this being the case, it was Deverell's mother who approached Lizzie and asked her if she would be a chaperoned model for her son. Now, Walter Deverell was willing to pay Lizzie well, and so she agreed. Now, it didn't take long before Deverell's fellow friends and artists also were enchanted by Lizzie's looks. Her slender stature, her red hair, and her heavy-lidded eyes were somewhat unorthodox beauty during the Victorian period, but nonetheless, she became the face of feminine beauty and grace during the Pre-Raphaelite period. Now, Lizzie is featured in some of the world's most famous paintings, especially this one here. This is Ophelia by Sir John Everett Millay, and Lizzie almost died modeling for this painting. You see, Millay had her set up in a tub of water, and underneath the tub, he had lit candles in order to keep the water warm. However, the candles went out, and Millay was so focused on the painting, he didn't notice. And Lizzie wanted to be a good model, and she didn't want to complain, so she didn't say anything. And for her efforts, she was rewarded with pneumonia. And it wasn't until her father threatened Millay that he agreed to pay for her medical bills. However, the artist most captivated with Lizzie was Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Rossetti was almost obsessed with her, and he offered to teach her to draw in order to spend more time together. And Lizzie proved to be quite the gifted student. As a matter of fact, when Rossetti showed Lizzie's work to the esteemed art critic John Ruskin, Ruskin bought everything on the spot, and he claimed that her drawings were better than Rossetti's. Now, at this point, Lizzie had also stopped working at the hat shop, which showed that she had faith in Rossetti's future intentions for her. But her faith turned into fallacy when she discovered how notoriously unfaithful Rossetti was. And in 1851, Rossetti did actually uh, propose to her. However, the engagement went on for 10 years. 10 years. And during those 10 years, Rossetti's affections were inconsistent at best. Sometimes he was madly in love with Lizzie, and sometimes he was madly in love with someone else. And you can imagine the toll that this took on Elizabeth's mental and physical well-being. It sent her into a downward spiral where she became dependent on laudanum. And of course, that sent her into the dark world of addiction. Now, Rossetti finally did make good on his promise to marry her, but it wasn't until he thought she was dying in 1860 that he actually went through and married her. And the marriage, well, it was plagued by Rossetti's infidelities and Lizzie's constant depression and dependency on laudanum. 
And in 1861, most likely because of her dependency on laudanum, she gave birth to a stillborn baby girl. And of course, this sent her into an unrelenting grief. Now, Rossetti, too, was mourning the loss of his daughter. However, he was very thankful that Lizzie, in her frail state of health, had actually survived the ordeal. But Rossetti's time with Lizzie would be short. On February 10th, 1862, Rossetti and Lizzie went to dinner with fellow poet Algernon Charles Swinburne. And afterwards, Rossetti dropped Lizzie off at home to go teach at the Working Men's College. Well, at least that's the story. There is some speculation that Rossetti actually went to go visit his mistress. Regardless, Rossetti went home a little after 11 to find Lizzie in bed unconscious and an empty bottle of laudanum on the table next to her. Rossetti called in four doctors and none of them were able to revive her. And the next morning at 7.30 a.m., Elizabeth Siddle took her last breath. Now, there's speculation as to whether or not Lizzie took an accidental overdose or if it was intentional. And there has been some speculation about whether or not Lizzie left a note pinned to her nightgown and that Rossetti or somebody else who was there at the time burned the note in order to avoid shame and scandal. Regardless, Rossetti was absolutely devastated. And as a last gesture, whether it was a done out of guilt or as a gift or maybe he just wanted to be part of her journey into the next life he put a notebook of unpublished poems in her coffin before she was interred next to Rossetti's father at Highgate Cemetery but seven years later he changed his mind and wanted the poems back so Rossetti got permission to exhume his wife and retrieve the poems and Rossetti did actually publish those poems but the decision well it haunted him for the rest of his life until his own death in 1882. Now Lizzie's legacy lives on in the paintings of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood but also in her own artwork and poetry. Elizabeth Siddle's story is indeed a sad one, and that's all the more reason why her works shouldn't be overlooked. Her poetry is deep, raw, and it is some of the most heartbreaking things you will ever run across anywhere, and they are worth checking out. And I'm going to put a link below to a website where you can do exactly that. And if you'd like to read more about Elizabeth Siddle, Rossetti, and the Pre-Raphaelites in general, I would recommend two books. One is The Rossettis in Wonderland by Dina Rowe, and the other one is The Pre-Raphaelites in Love by Gay Dolly. Now, if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider hitting the subscribe button below because there'll be more coming soon. So I'll see you next time on History by the Book. Bye-bye.